Seeing China's leader in 2021 striking down domestic industries such as education and training, gaming, entertainment, and high tech, chastising officials and celebrities for their corruption and ideological flaws, promoting the idea of common prosperity, the world proclaimed Xi Jinping is steering China away from the path of economic reform and returning to the Mao era. But why doesn't Xi Jinping want to continue Deng Xiaoping's economic reform? Is he really a Maoist? Hello everyone, welcome to Lay's Real Talk, I'm Lei. People inside and outside China attribute China's four decades of economic reform to Deng Xiaoping, calling him the chief architect of the reform. However, if you ask some Chinese, they would disagree, and Xi Jinping undoubtedly is one of them. China's economic reform started from the southern city of Shenzhen. It was China's first special economic zone that experimented with market economy. Shenzhen's financial success in the early 1980s became the model that quickly rolled out to other parts of China. But the person behind Shenzhen's transformation wasn't Deng Xiaoping, it was Xi Jinping's father, Xi Zhongxun. Deng usurped the senior Xi's economic success and made it his own. In fact, the bitter animosity between Deng and the senior Xi went on for decades. Before we get into the details, let's correct one major misconception the Western world has about Chinese leaders. The West generally believes that Deng Xiaoping was a better leader than Mao Zedong because Deng opened up China. Mao is usually depicted as a ruthless dictator, while Deng as a West-leaning reformist. However, Mao and Deng were both equally cruel. From 1957 to 1967, Deng presided over the secretariat of the CCP's Central Committee and was the main executor of most of Mao's crimes, including the anti-rightist persecution of one million intellectuals and the great famine that starved 40 million Chinese to death. Furthermore, to gain Mao's trust, Deng snitched on other leaders. In 1956, Xi Jinping's father was implicated in a case involving a leader Deng snitched on. Deng forced the senior Xi to repent three times. In 1962, the CCP labeled the senior Xi as a chief criminal of an anti-CCP gang. The then Secretary General of the party was Deng Xiaoping, who played an active role in persecuting Xi Jinping's father. Some may argue that Deng had no choice but to carry out Mao's orders. Well, Deng's animosity against the senior Xi continued after Deng became the paramount leader. Other CCP leaders wanted to reinstate Xi after Mao died, but Deng resisted. In April 1978, after the senior Xi was reinstated, he couldn't return to Beijing to resume his position as vice premier, but was demoted to a provincial leader in Guangdong. It was there that the senior Xi saw the poor living condition of the people and had the idea of setting up a manufacturing zone near Hong Kong. In the spring of 1979, with permission from the central government, he set up the special economic region in Baoan County to manufacture goods for exports. Baoan grew exponentially and became the city of Shenzhen, the cradle of China's economic reform. Xi Zhongxun's success in Guangdong got him back to Beijing, and by 1987, he was one of the eight remaining CCP leaders from the Mao era, who were the most senior members of the leadership. He stood up for Hu Yaobang, Deng's chosen successor, when Deng removed Hu for being too liberal. By the way, I made a series of videos about how CCP leaders came to power and their relations with their chosen heirs. Check them out at the end. When the student movement broke out in 1989, Xi Zhongxun was against Deng's bloody crackdown on the students. And as a result, Deng sent him away to the south to get some rest. Xi Jinping's father never returned to Beijing until 1999 after Deng Xiaoping had died. So in Xi Jinping's mind, his father was the one who started China's economic reform, but Deng took the credit. And another reason that made Xi Jinping not fond of Deng's reform was the problems he inherited from the reform when he came to power. After the CCP seized power in 1949, it attempted to build a communist utopia in China following Marx's original writings. 
However, by the end of the Cultural Revolution in 1976, the communist utopia was nowhere in sight, but the national economy was on the verge of collapse. Deng's reform and opening up policy was an emergency measure taken when the CCP was facing an existential crisis. By giving the peasants a little incentive, giving small businesses a little money, giving the intellectuals a little freedom, and allowing the socialist state to get a little closer to capitalism, the CCP saved itself and legitimized its rule by lifting people out of poverty. Actually, the chief architect who had a vision for China's economic reform was Zhao Ziyang, whom Deng brought down after Zhao sympathized with the student protesters in 1989. Zhao's blueprint for reform included political reform, something Deng Xiaoping wouldn't allow. Zhao Ziyang said this in his memoir. The reform that Deng had in mind was not real political modernization or democratization, but administrative reform, a reform of working systems, organizational systems, working methods, and working styles. Deng advocated reforms on the premise of upholding the one-party rule of the Communist Party, and the reforms were precisely for the purpose of further solidifying the dictatorship of the party. Zhao's blueprint for China's reform was to make economic and political reforms go hand in hand, to be carried out on the tracks of democracy and the rule of law, so all Chinese people would share the benefits of the reform. Deng only wanted to reform economically but not politically, and the core of Deng Xiaoping's reform was to let some people get rich first. In a market economy, the public and private sectors are separate and the market drives the allocation of resources. The so-called Chinese socialist market economy, by comparison, lets those in power control the market, and public and private sectors are combined. CCP leaders thus became communist capitalists, an oxymoron that grew out of Deng Xiaoping's economic reform. As a result, the powerful families of the CCP leaders plundered national resources and became insanely rich. In this economic model, Deng's chosen heir, Jiang Zemin, who later became Xi Jinping's biggest political enemy, is the one responsible for metastasizing the CCP's corruption to a whole new level. Under Jiang, officials at all levels and their families took full advantage of their power to get rich turning the CCP's business into a game of power and money. From the 1990s to 2012, before Xi Jinping came to power, corruption was like a massive flood that broke the dike and swamped China. When Xi started his anti-corruption campaign, people were joking that he would have to turn China into a giant prison if he wanted to lock up all the corrupt officials. Joke aside, she saw the disasters Deng's economic reform had brought to Chinese society. But he didn't have an alternative. He didn't face the fact that the problem wasn't the reform. The problem was, and still is, the Communist Party and its ideology. Some say that she may not be a Maoist, but turned left because he has been misguided and trapped by one of his close advisors the Politburo Standing Committee member Wang Huning, who has been the party's political theorist serving three CCP leaders, Jan, Hu, and Xi. The Washington Post called Wang Huning the most dangerous man in the world, while some China experts call him the Jiang Zemin faction's biggest conspiracy against Xi because with Wang's help, Xi's leftist policies ruined his reputation and gained him more enemies than friends. When Deng came to power, he steered China away from Mao's craziness. Now Xi is moving away from Deng's craziness. But Xi should understand that if he doesn't end communism, he is no different from Mao or Deng, regardless whether he moves left or right. Xi's family suffered tremendously during the Cultural Revolution. When his father was sent to prison, she was only 15 years old. Militant Red Guards ransacked his home, and one of his sisters committed suicide under pressure. If his memory serves him well, Xi Jinping should know that communist ideology, whether it's Mao's version or Deng's version, was not good for China. 
Here are two videos that explain how Xi Jinping and his predecessors came to power. They are part of a four-part series. Please check them out. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.